Game of Thrones, the card game. Okay, the first um, phase of the game is the plot phase, where we choose, each player chooses a plot card. For House Baratheon, I'm going to play this card here, it's called Tawny for the Hand. Um, it has an effect too, which says each of your knight characters gets plus one strength and is immune to opponent characters' abilities. So Baratheon is going to play this block card here. Normally you would play these face down, um, and then once all players have chosen their plot cards, you reveal them simultaneously. For House Targaryen, I've decided to um, choose this one called Counting Favours. Um, when revealed, choose an opponent. Each of you draw three cards. Okay, as Baratheon hoped, um, he wins the initiative. His plot card has an initiative of six, and Targaryen has an initiative of three. So House Baratheon will choose to be the first player, so he will act first in each of the rounds um, that follow. The next step is to look at um, this When Revealed effect from the House Targaryen plot card. So when it says When Revealed, choose an opponent, then you and that opponent each draw three cards. So we're going to do that right now. Baratheon draws Knight of Flowers, Salador's Crew, and Sir Eldon Astamont. Targaryen draws Westeros Bleeds, Crossroads, and the Temple of Graces. Okay, the next phase is the draw phase. Notice we've already drawn um, three cards because of this plot. The draw phase says to draw two more cards. Um, the rules tell us that there's a draw um, limit. Um, I think they call it the draw cap that says you can't draw more than three additional cards in addition to the two cards that you will draw during the draw phase. So we've already drawn those three, and we're going to draw our two now as part of the draw phase. That means for the rest of this round, we can't um, draw any more cards. So Baratheon draws two cards. He draws Massey's Hook and Aegon's Garden. Targaryen draws Black Hatchling and Master Aemon. The next phase is the marshalling phase. Okay, so House Baratheon will get three gold. So during the marshalling phase, I have this Aegon's Garden, which is going to give me one extra gold. Um, income during the next turn is limited here, so I can only play one limited card each turn. So I'm going to play this one as a zero cost and pop this up here in the location spot. The next thing Baratheon is going to play is Robert's Loyalists, which costs three gold. However, I'm going to use this location card here, which says during the marshalling phase. Discard narrow C from play to reduce the cost of the next um, Baratheon character you play this phase by two. So I'm going to discard narrow C to reduce the cost of Robert's, Robert's loyalists um, by two gold. So it's going to cost me one gold. I'll take one gold here and place this back in the treasury. So Robert's Loyalists cross the Narrow Sea and join Robert Baratheon in his quest. The next card I've chosen to play for Baratheon, I have two gold left, is Shadow's Blessing. 
So Robert's loyalists here are fighting alongside Melisandre. Um, they have this military icon. They're going to be good, strong fighters for me. Um, this Shadow's Blessing is a condition attachment, and it says, Attached character gets plus two strength while it has a power icon, and minus two strength while it doesn't have a power icon. So, um, Robert's Loyalists do have this crown, this blue crown power icon. This is going to cost me one gold. I'll attach it to Robert's Loyalists, the Shadow's Blessing of Melisandre. Um, there's another card here called um, Milk of the Poppy, which is an attachment, and it treats the attached character as though its test text box were blank. So I could potentially play this onto someone like um, Dothraki's Handmaiden or, or Jogo um, to give um, the Targaryens a, a bit of a hard time. Um, I may actually do that. I was thinking the other option is to keep hold of the gold um, and use it to um, help me win dominance. Um, but I kind of like the idea now of um, using this milk of the poppy, um, this poisonous liquid, um, to give Jogo a bit of a hard time. So let's do that. Let's play this attachment on Jogo. It costs one gold that goes to the treasury. Now it's the Targaryen marshalling phase. Their plot card gives them three um, gold income. And Carl Drogo's tent gives them plus one gold income. So the Targaryens take four gold from the treasury. Okay, with my four gold, the first thing I'm going to do is play this Temple of the Graces because it has a cost of zero. It's a limited card, so I can play no more limited cards this time. The second card I'm going to play is Crossroads. What I want to do here with these different locations is really boost up the Targaryen. Um, income. This is going to cost me two gold. Back to the treasury. And finally, with my last two gold, I have this card called Master Aemon. This is a good card. It has a response effect which says, Kneel Master Aemon to save a Night's Watch character from being killed. Well, Master Aemon is a Night's Watch character, so as long as that card is not kneeling, um, um, I could use his response effect on himself, kneel him like this, and stop himself from being killed. Um, so that's quite a handy effect, and we might see that in action during the game. The next phase is the challenges phase. Thank you.